Today we're going to do a very quick review of uh, 2.4 and 4.1, which is our starting of lines and systems. Um, and we'll use the Kahoot. And if you participate and put a name down that I can recognize, I will give you credit on your homework. And the winners will also get even more credit. So, all right. So then, um, reminder, next test is Wednesday of next week, not tomorrow, but the following Wednesday. Um, make sure you have a working camera. And the review is already on Blackboard under the homework assignments tab. So some basics that you'll need for today. You don't have to write this down yet if you don't want to, because I will be putting it back up. But formula you will need to remember is distance equals rate times time. Hence my little funny over here, which is one of my favorite comics. Um, and then we need to rem you need to remember what complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. So anytime you have an, a problem dealing with two complementary angles, one of your equations should be x plus y equals 90. And then supplementary angles always add up to 180. So anytime you're doing, dealing with a problem that refers to supplementary angles, one of your equations should be x plus y equals 180. And we are working with systems of linear equations. So all of the problems, the application problems that we're working with today, you should be able to set up two equations for those. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do the Kahoot. I just always hate the music. What school did you use when you set up your Kahoot? What, what? What school did you use when you set up your Kahoot? I like trying to look up, for, up uh, ACC on there, but it didn't come up. Oh, ACC. Uh, weird. Maybe it's the other program I'm thinking about. Oh, Pear Deck, I did that with ACC. I've done almost everything with ACC. Maybe, maybe, I, maybe I didn't do Kahoot with ACC. There's one of them. I can't remember which it was. I couldn't find ACC. On I always one. get mixed up which ones I do with which. I wish I, could, I wish I was one of those people that did everything consistently because it would make my life so much easier. But <laughs> I, always, I don't. I never do. Even my name is Melissa, but I go by Lisa. And it's everyone's always confused, always, including me. Uh, if you're just now coming in, please sign into the Kahoot. And I'm going to start it here in just a minute. So right now I only have three people. There we go. Thank you, Leslie two people that aren't on that are in the class right now. So if you can, if you cannot get in for whatever reason, uh, if you'll let me know, I can, so you can still participate. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Weight on Mars varies directly as weight on Earth. 95 pounds on Earth is the same as 38 pounds on Mars. How much, Mary weighs 120 pounds on Earth. How much would she weigh on Mars?
Oh, can I give them a little bit of a heads up for like the next couple of days? They're probably going to want to get bring their calculator to class. Especially when we go 6.4B is the one that we're really going to need it for. <laughs> yeah, and if you have a, a graphing calculator, that would be even better. Okay, not too bad. So um, let's look at this real quick. Where's my stop mirroring? All right, so we have. Um, There we go. All right, so we have uh, weight on Mars varies directly as weight on Earth. So Mars, ah. or you could put Earth over Mars, it really doesn't matter. Um, 95 pounds on Earth, so 95 goes on the bottom. If my problem is the same as 38 pounds on Mars. And then the question is, Mary weighs 120 pounds on Earth. How much would she weigh on Mars? So 120 pounds. would go on Earth. And we want to know how much she's going to weigh on Mars. And then we just would do a cross product. And solve for M. And that would give us our answer, which is 48. Way to go, Dakota. Given the following piecewise function, what is the domain? Okay, so remember domain is always what when we're talking about uh, X or Y, which, which one of these represents domain? The F of X, which is these two things right here, 
the negative three and the x minus two, that is going to be your y value. Your x values will be represented by the intervals right here. So your x values are going to be the, the numbers between negative four and one. So if you're looking on a number line, your x values would be from negative four all the way to one. And then it would pick back up at one and go all the way to three. So it should be, is it, did I copy that right? Let's see. Yeah, I'm, this should be an, this should have been an equal to right here. So it should go from here. So the domain would be everything from negative four to three. Remember the domain is always the X values. Given the following piecewise function, what is F of one? Okay, so, so um, here we have, this is like saying, what this is saying is y equals three, because f of x is the same thing as y. So this is like saying y equals three when x is between negative four and one, including negative four, but not including one, right? Because that tells you that the one is not included in that first interval. And then, or, y is equal to x minus 2 when x is between 1 and 3, including both 1 and 3, because it has those symbols on both of them. So the only place where f of x the only place where f, you have f of 1 would be in this interval right here, this interval. So that means that you would plug 1 into this equation. So f of 1 would be 1 minus 2, which is negative 1.
given the following piecewise function, is the function continuous on its domain and why? Okay, most of y'all got it good, good for answering. Um, so let's look at this. So here's our same uh, piecewise function. So um, when f of x equals to negative three, when x is between negative four and one, and negative four will have a solid dot and one will have an open dot. And so it's here's negative three, negative three. So negative four, negative three, and one, negative three, like that. And then f of x equals x minus two, when x is between one and three, and you're gonna have closed dots on both of them because of the, so one minus two is negative one and three minus two is one. So we have one negative one and three one. And you can see that that is not continuous because there is a break between those two intervals. Solve the system of equations by any method. And I said, except for back solving, but I don't care if you wanna use back solving, you can. That's a good technique if you're taking a multiple choice test, which we will not be giving. And if you know what back solving is, then you've probably used it on multiple choice tests before.
Most of y'all got that. Um, so, real quickly, when you're doing this, I would definitely have picked, but you didn't have to, the elimination method. And I'm going to pick to get rid of, I choose to get rid of the x's. So I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by 5 and the top equation by 3. And I know that they need to have opposite signs, so I'm going to make one of these be negative. And so this turns out to be 15x plus 9y, I'm sorry, minus 9y equals negative 12. And this turns out to be negative 15x plus 10y equals to negative 5. And then the x is, became eliminated, which is what we wanted. And we wind up with x equals negative 17. And then when we plug this back into one of either one of those equations, then the other, uh, the y value turns out to be negative 11. Classify the system and give the number of solutions. You don't have to solve it all the way. As soon as you can tell what it is, that's fine. Okay, so, um, so this one, um, you don't have to solve all the way if you don't want to, but if you don't solve all the way, at least show me the slope and the y-intercept. So for example, uh, with the first equation, if you solved it for y, it would turn out to be negative x plus 4, and the slope is negative 1, the y-intercept is 4. And in the second one, if you solve for y, you wind up with negative x plus 0. So the slope was negative 1. And the y-intercept is 0. So that means they're going to be parallel lines, and they'll have no solutions. Or you could solve it, and you come up with a false statement. So you would also know that it's inconsistent or contradiction. There's no solutions. So um, just as long as you show me something, that shows you know why you don't just write if you just write inconsistent no solutions and you don't show anything then you won't get any credit because i figure that's just a big guess so you need to show me something
classify the system and give the number of solutions. Again, you don't have to solve all the way if you don't want to. And if you've fallen kind of behind in the pack, this next three, I think, are um, like really easy. <laughs> so you might want to get your head back in it. Um, so here, again, I'm glad. if you solve for y here, you get y equals 2x plus 2. If you solve for y here, you get y equals 2x plus 2. You can see it's the same line. So it, that means it's dependent on an identity. It has infinitely many solutions. Um, now on the homework, we actually asked you for the solution. If you're asked for the solution, then you have to say it's all x and y such that they fall on the line y equals 2x plus 2. That's, this is the actual solution. This is, the, um, this is how we classify it. This is how, um, how many solutions there are. And this is the actual solution. These next three should go really fast. Which of these is true about complementary angles? Hurry, hurry, hurry. The short, short one. they do add to 90 degrees. So complementary angles add to 90 degrees. They, they are each other's complement if they add to 90. What about supplementary angles? We do add to one eighty. Yay, everybody. Okay, and I forget what this last one is, but I Bode drove from point A to point B in T hours. His brother Joe left three hours after Bo and arrived at the same time as Bo. How long would it take Joe to drive from point A to point B? I didn't give you all much time on this one. 
and we'll talk about this in a minute. And it would be t minus three hours. Okay. If t, if he um, if it took Bo ten hours to get from point A to point B, and Joe left three hours after Bo, and he arrived at the same time, then that would mean seven hours, right? Okay. So. Yay! And the grand prize winner is Leslie. Awesome. Okay. You will get, oh, and August and Olivia, I'm proud of y'all too. Okay, so uh, let's see here. Oh, I don't want that. Okay, so out of there. Now we're back to here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we are going to be working on these problems. There are not very many of them. And I'm going to put y'all in four groups. Um, group one needs to be prepared to discuss and explain number 113. Write these down, if you will. Group two needs to be prepared to discuss and explain number 85. So someone in group two, you need to nominate someone or someone needs to volunteer in your group to be able to explain that problem. In group three, I want someone in that group with the help of the rest of the group to be prepared to discuss and explain problem 89. Group four, be prepared to discuss and explain problem 93. Um, so, and then all the groups, all of you guys should be prepared to discuss and explain 77, 97, and 101. So if you finish your assigned problem plus the three, 77, 97, and 101, then you can work on the other problems. But the first problem I want you to work on is the one that your group is assigned to. After you finish that, do 77, 97, and 101. If you finish all of that, then go back and start the other ones. Um, some things that you want to remember when you're doing these is distance equals rate times time. That complementary angles, if your problem involves complementary angles, you will have two equations and one of them should always be x plus y equals 90, where x is the measure of one angle and y is the measure of the other. Supplementary angles, you should have two equations as well. Always let one of them be x plus y is 180, where x is the first angle or one of the angles and y is another angle. A um, couple other things, if we're talking about, let's say we have the sum of two numbers. Here's, let's say, four. That would be represented by x plus y equals four. If we have the difference of two numbers is eight that would be represented by x minus y equals eight. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put y'all in four groups. We'll probably work about 20 minutes and then come back together and spend the rest of the time discussing these. So um, does everyone understand what you're being asked to do? Give me a thumbs up. Thank you, Hunter. Does everyone know how to give a thumbs up? Okay, unless someone is 
telling me no, they don't understand, then we're going to keep go ahead um, and do this. Um, it doesn't look like I can put them in groups for some reason. It's got breakout rooms, huh? I don't see breakout rooms in my, in my menu. Uh, I got it, if you want me to do it. Yeah, yeah. Four groups, four rooms. Yeah, and uh, then make sure, can you make sure that I'm somehow, I'm I have not, no idea what it's doing. Yeah, just make sure I'm, a, uh, I guess I'm a host. It should let you, yeah. I know. Is it giving you the option now for breakout rooms? Yeah. Okay. I don't know what the deal. Probably something I'll on. Jump over to one then. Okay. I have a question for this one, for 113. Yep. Um, so it'd be like the cross multiply thing that we do. I don't think we have any problems that we're doing that on in this set. No, cause I just. No, this will be like the distance problem that we did in the lecture yesterday.
Yeah, I would set up a table for those. That's the best way to get those sort of organized. How the heck? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know what happened. There's like two people in breakout room two right now. It's uh, like looks lonely in there, and there's like what four people in this one. It's supposed to evenly space them, but I think what it did was it threw Miss Watson in there and it counted her as a person. Or counted her as a student. I guess she is a person, right? Mm, true, true. She might be an android, but probably a person. I'm ready to go over this one whenever y'all are. What you know you're going to 113 is that what you said? Uh, I think so. And there's like three other ones, right? That later on everyone's supposed to have. Someone just joined in.
you get this far, Bree? Um, I just I started doing the other ones because I like kind of got confused and forgot about that. Okay. So th this is my suggestion to set it up, is to draw this table. And, and I talked about this in the lecture a little bit, like distance equals rate times time. So what does it say? Uh, John drove 55 miles per hour. So where's that going to go on the table? In the middle. Is that a distance, a rate, or a time, I guess is what I'm asking. Rate. What? Say it louder. Rate. Yeah, it's a rate. And so it's going to go under John and the rate, right? And it says something about David driving 60 miles per hour. Can you guess where that one's going to go? Same deal, but with David, right? Oh. What about the time? And this is one of those ones that like you can actually set it up differently. You just have to remember how you define things. Uh, John's time should be T plus one. Oh, you did T plus one in John's? If that's T plus one, then David's has to be T, right? Yeah. You could set it up. You could do this one T minus one, and you could do this one T. You just have to remember like how you define things, right? At the end, you might have to like subtract one from your answer or something if you do it that way. This way, we're solving for David's time, which should tell us how much time it takes David to catch up to him, right? I keep getting those mixed up. I want I put plus one for David. I can barely hear you. I keep getting those times mixed up. I put the T plus one for David and T for John. Okay, so like I think step back and like think about it for a second. David and John, right? John's going to leave like an hour earlier so i know it like it sounds like we're going to take out and subtract an hour from from like david's time or something right but if we think about it and like what's actually happening if he leaves an hour earlier he's going to be on the road for one hour more than david oh, okay. yeah it's one of those things like it sounds like you like are supposed to maybe subtract but it's actually addition you leave an hour earlier you're adding an hour to your time right and then how do we find let's do david's distance how do we find david's distance what does that look like Six. what is it what i heard something 60t yeah, it looks like 60 times T is 60 T. Yeah, that's it. And this one is what? You should really put like some parentheses around that thing, but it's the same thing, right? We're multiplying those two. And then when we set up our equation, what are we setting up? Those two things have to be equal, right? And then we solve for T. I think these are probably like some of the more difficult ones. Uh, definitely in this section, right? Oh. 
Okay, where are we at? All right, so I think y'all are pretty much just set up to solve this thing. I don't know, I think everything froze. I think you'll probably can't even hear me. How are y'all doing? So far pretty good, we solved 98. Sorry, 93. And well, two of our microphones aren't working, but they did manage to complete 93. I'm um, just working on 77 and 85. 93 was y'all's number? Matt. Sure. Yeah. Um, I can now move from room to room, but I cannot pull them back into, I can't end the session. Okay, you want me to end it? Will you please? Okay. Thanks. Sure. Okay. Everybody back. Okay. All right. So the first question, number 77, I didn't assign to any group in particular. Would someone, uh, one of the three, four groups, would someone volunteer to go through that with that, the class? Sure. I guess I'll do it. Who's this? Timothy. Timothy. Perfect. Right, so we know the sum of the numbers equals 37. So I put x plus y equals 37. Yep. And then there's going to be a second equation since their difference is 9. So I put x minus y equals 9. Yep. Instead of solving for y, I did it a little different. Okay. Well, I decided to solve for x. So I okay. added y to the other side. Okay, so you said x equals, equals y nine. plus 9. Yeah, okay. one, nine plus y. Okay. So then I put the first equation as x. So mm -hmm. I put it nine plus y. I put one y plus a one y equals 37. So really just nine plus two y equals 37. And okay. then I subtract nine to both sides. Okay. And then two should equal 14. Y equals 14? Yes, sorry, Y, should, y equals 14. And then what does X equal? Uh, so you plug it back into X. Sorry. 14 minus seven. So you, um, Timothy, you're doing beautifully, but you, you have it solved for x, right? x equals y plus 9. Yeah. So you could just stick it right there, right? Mm -hmm. Oh. So x, x would be 14 plus 9. Right. Which is? 23. Right. OK. Uh, so I'm one of the, that's this simple. I'm not. I'm not that picky about it, but generally I'd like you to define your variables. So really, I mean, I'd like you to say let x equal first number 
and y equals second number. Again, this one's not that important to do that, but I always like to point that out. Um, and that's excellent and a great way to do it. But did anyone else do it differently? Did another group do it differently? Anyone? I would have done it with elimination or off the bat, personally. Okay, okay, Hunter. So how would you have done it? Just tell us real quick. Oh, that was me, <laughs> but it's Matt. Oh, <laughs> yeah, oh, Matt. I just got back. My internet decided to cut out. I don't know okay. where we're at. All right. So yeah, I would have done an elimination too because what can you see right off the bat here? What if you add these two things together? What happens to the Y's? They go away. Yeah. Right, because one's positive and one's negative, so we would wind up with 2x is equal to 46, and then x would equal to 23, and then we just plug it back in. But it's, it's whatever you see, and that's fine. It's just that, to me, if you see something that you can tell automatically is going to cancel out if you add them together, to me, that's the most efficient way to do it. Okay, group two, uh, number 85. Um, I was kind of kicked out of my group, but I do have the answer. Okay, Olivia, will you, go, will you do it for us <laughs> then? Thank you. Okay, so um, how, would you, how would you approach this? Well, I don't know if I like set it up right, but... Okay. I, I basically did x plus 5x equals 48. Okay, so uh, let's think about that for just a minute. Uh, okay, so you said, okay, this is, I guess this is kind of confusing a little bit maybe. Um, you want the total number of gallons to be 48. And if x is the number of gallons, in the first, in the big cooler, and y is the number of gallons in the smaller cooler. Yeah, I, I, I guess I could have done x plus 5y equals 48. Okay, so if x is the number of gallons in the big cooler and y is the number of gallons in the small cooler, then the x plus the y should equal to 48, right? Mm -hmm. And then take into account the big cooler is five times as large as the small cooler. So the big cooler is five times the smaller cooler. Then, okay, I, I see what you're doing. I just think, did you have this equation as well? The second one, the x equals 5y? Um, I kind of, I just combined it. I just kind of did what I thought would be the easiest yeah. for me. Okay. And I got 6x equals 48. And then uh -huh. I just divided the 6 and got 8 and then moved it back in. So I okay. got 40 and 8. So what you, you have to, in these problems, you need to, if you don't have two equations, you're probably doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. As you have to be um, comparing two linear equations. So the first thing is we know that the gallons in the first, uh, the gallons in both the big cooler and the and the small cooler together have to equal 48 gallons, right? Mm -hmm. And then we know the smaller cooler, I mean, the larger cooler is five times the smaller cooler. So the second equation is x equals 5y. And now we can use substitution because we can say 5y. We can plug that 5y into that x. So we'd have 5y plus y equals 48. Mm -hmm. And so that would be 6y equals 48. And I do think this kind of, sometimes I think they're a little bit confusing because I, I can see why you approached it the way you did. And then divide both sides by six and you get y equals eight. So eight gallons. And that would be in the small cooler. And then because we know that x equals five times y,
that would be 40 gallons in the large cooler. And then if we add those together, they should check to come back to 48. So eight plus 40 would give us the 48. Group three. I'm going to get happy with number 89. Here's group three. We're group Well, I'm a part of group oh, three. Sorry, I was on mute. I didn't realize it. Oh my. <laughs> so we got uh, two pounds for oranges and I mean two dollars for a pound of oranges. One dollar okay, so, yeah. per pound of bananas. Okay, so tell me how to set it up. It's uh, like uh, two linear equations. Okay. And then you have to solve them through elimination. So give me the equations, will you, please? I'm using E and F for okay. oranges and bananas. So it's 7E plus 3F equals 17. 3E okay. plus 6F equals 12. Okay, so you're saying let E equal to the pounds of oranges? Yeah. And F is the pounds of bananas? <laughs> Can I ask you where you came up with those? <gasps> or do you just like those letters? I'm just using variables that are different from each other so I'm not getting okay. confused. And that's, and that's perfect. It's just, it's just, I just think it's, I think it's funny sometimes what people pick, but I love it. So anyway, so then what did you do? We're using elimination. So okay. you have to find the least common multiple. So what did, what did you multiply by? I chose six F. Okay. So you multiply the top one by six. No. So it's six F. So I'm going to multiply the first one by two to get six F. Oh, okay. And then I'll switch the signs. Okay, great. Okay, Two. negative three. Okay, three. Yeah. And then you're going to switch. Okay, so he actually, he did it a really efficient way. But if you hadn't seen those, that two and three would work, you could just multiply the top by six and the bottom by uh, three. So it was, yeah, you could have done that. So, all right. So, um, oh wait, this, this one should have been, not three, but uh, one, right? Sorry. Okay, let's keep, keep going, I'm just. So what, what do you get? Uh, well, so you have to switch the signs and then you get um, 11, negative 11E equals negative 22. So anyways, I just simplified it down to E equals 2. And then now I, all I got to do is now is just uh, plug it in. Okay, this should have been 3 to 1. Okay, so we got uh, 11E equals to 22. So E equals 2. Great. And then, so that's the pounds of oranges, right? Mm -hmm. And then what? Um, it should, should be yeah, and you just plug it into the. Or just two, right? Thanks, and then just plug that back into the right. E either one of these equations, right? It doesn't matter which mm -hmm. one. So I'm going to say three times two plus six f equals twelve. So one pound of bananas. Okay, group four. Right, that's us. Okay, right. For problem 93, we're gonna have two equations. Okay. Uh, hot dogs and cups of uh, cottage. I put in an X and Y, but X is 
Remember, what is the hot dogs? Why is it going to be the cups of cottage cheese? Okay. All right. Now, for the first equation, we're going to put 2x plus 3y equals 960. Yeah, because uh, you have two hot dogs, and each hot dog has X calories, and three cups of cottage cheese, and each cup of calories cheese has Y calories, and the total calories is 960. Okay, good. And now? Second equation is 5X plus 2Y equals 1190. Good. And we're going to be doing elimination. Okay, great. So for the top equation, I put negative two on both sides. And the equation should equal negative four X minus six Y equals negative 1920. The equation below that, I multiplied across by three on both sides. So the okay. equation should equal 15 X positive six Y equals 35, 70. Okay. So the y, yeah, the y's cancel each other out and you should equal 11x equals 6, sorry, 11x should equal 1650. And then you divide by 11 and x should equal 150. Right. Right. I forgot the units. Calories. Okay, and then I plug uh, 150 into the first equation. Okay. Uh, into the first equation, sorry. So 2 times 150 should be 300. And I subtract 300 from both sides. And then you divide three into 660. Yeah, Y should equal 220 calories. Yep. Beautiful. Okay. I'd rather have a hot dog than a cup of cottage cheese. Yeah, hot dog any day. I don't know why they put cottage cheese. I don't know. Numbers. I mean, in, in the calories, I'm telling you. All right, so uh, 97, can I get someone that has not talked to tell me how to do 97? Well, I can tell you this, uh, August and Dakota have their microphones. Um, they're not oh. working. Oh, okay. Two of them had to log back on and off just to get back into the chat, but. Oh, that's, that's so bad. Because their mics are down. Okay, uh, how about draw? The machines are working against us today, I swear. Okay, so in uh, Timothy, then, or can you tell me how to do that one? Uh, well, I'm trying to start that one yet, but let's see. Difference of two college angles equals 17. Just give me that. Right, so let's see, the difference of two college angles. So we know uh, if they're going to be set equal to 90. Yeah. So for, that's for, right. The first thing you always want to do if you are working with complementary angles is set the two angles equal to 90 degrees, right? That's always going to okay. be one of the equations if you're dealing with complementary angles. Mm -hmm. And then what's going to be the second equation? Well, since we're going to find the difference, uh, x minus y equals 17. Yeah. Quick, um, do we have to, I know I mentioned in the previous problems, we have to label the x and y. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you're right. Okay. So we just should probably get into the habit of just filling that out as we go along. I would do it every single time. Yep. Just identify okay. your variables. That's the safest thing to do. So from here, we can do elimination. So we sure. can put 2x 
equals 107. Sorry, doing the math here as I'm talking. Yeah, that's okay. You're doing great. Okay, 107, 553 minus 6. It's 10 going to 10, 5 times. I got, yep, yes, 53.5 degrees. Great. Let me plug that in. I'm sorry. Want me to want me to keep going or? Yeah, please. Okay, so you plug fifty three point five degrees into the first equation. Or you could do it in the second equation if you wanted, right? Oh well, yeah, I mean, yeah, right. I'm so used to using the first equation. Yeah, yeah, and that one's easier for me too. But but right. you could use either equation. So then we subtract fifty three point five from both sides. Y equals. Let's see. 36.7 degrees. 36.5, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Make sure you put degrees on there. Forgetting that. Last one. Y'all done great today, incidentally. Uh, I guess I'll do this one too. Okay. Go for it, Timothy, thanks. Okay. All right, so supplementary angles, um, X plus Y equals 180. Yep, anytime you see supplementary angles, you know that's gonna be one of the equations. Right, second equation, X minus Y equals 88. Plus 2X equals 190. I'm sorry, yes. Yeah. Cancel out the y's. 2x equals 196. Hold up. I'm sorry. Sorry, hold on a minute. 276. I'm sorry. Divide 2 into 276. X equals 138 degrees. And then we plug that into the first equation or whichever equation. Yep. And Y should equal, oh yes, so subtract Y should equal 42 degrees. Beautiful. Okay. All right, last one. Group one. Anyone from group one do this one? Hunter, did you do it? Yes, ma'am. Oh, great, great, great. Perfect. Okay, so tell me what to do here. Uh, so first I set up a table. Like, I love uh, it, yes. A lecture. Perfect. Okay, and what did you put in the table? How did you label uh, it? Leftmost box is going to be D or distance. Mm -hmm. Middle box will be the rate and mm -hmm. the right box will be the time. Great. Okay, and then what's the labels over here? On the left side, we will have John on top and David on the bottom. Okay. Okay. Alrighty. Um, so it says that John drove at 55 miles per hour, so his rate's going to be 55. And David went at 60 miles per hour, so his rate's going to be 60. All right. Um, David left first, so his time is just T. No, sorry, he left second. My bad. Uh, John left first. His time is T plus one because he left an hour later or earlier. Wait, I'm confused. So tell me oh, <laughs> So whenever I set my thing up, mm -hmm. I did the names reverse, but I like the person that left first being on top, which is why I'm doing this, but now I'm reading it off and it's, I'm mixing things up. So. So John, who left first? John left first. So his time is T plus one. Okay. And David's time is T. Okay. So you could have also done the other way, right? You could have made John be T, but if you did that, what would David have to be? 
D minus one. Right, right. So either way would be fine. Okay, distance. So the last bit is uh, John's distance is going to be 55 times T plus one. The T plus one goes in parentheses. Mm -hmm. And then David's time is just 60 T. Great. And then we set up our equation of 55 times t plus 1 is equal to 60t. And then we distribute the 55 to get 55t plus 55 equals 60t. Subtract 55 from uh, 55t from both sides. Oops. Right. And then just divide uh, by five, and that'll leave you with t equals 11 hours for D John, no, David to catch up to John. So the question is, how long will it take for David to catch up to John? And that would be what we're looking for. T is 11, right? Right. Exactly. So 11 hours. Um, and if we had done it the other way, we would have had to actually, if we had found John, we would have had to subtract one and it would have been still the same thing. Now, the only thing I want to point out here is that everyone, you might be saying, saying, well, this doesn't look like two equations, but it really is right because uh, like you could just say this was D and this was D. So in this case, D would equal to 55 times T plus one. And the second one, D would equal to 60T. So those would be your two equations. But you don't really need to do that if you've already got a chart, because you can just see that these two things have to equal to each other. Right? Uh, but if, if you didn't and you wanted to actually see it as two equations, you could do that and then just substitute in one of the. So it really does fit with the rest of what we've been doing. And if they That's asked us question. John's time, we should be able to find that as well. What's that? Oh, yes. If, if they asked for how long was John on the road, it's, I mean, it's kind of obvious if you like read the problem, he's like, it's not our show. Yeah, just make sure you read the problem and answer the question. <clears throat> that's, and that's the thing I'm the worst at. It's like I just jump into a problem and then um, I'm answering questions that they're not asking or I'm not answering something they did ask. So I have to make myself read the whole problem. I think there's also like a point of confusion when they say like John left an hour before David. It uh -huh. really sounds like you're supposed to like subtract one, right? And so mm -hmm. like a lot of people think I'm going to subtract one. But what that like step a step back and think about it like for a minute. Is John on the road more or less than David? He's going to be on the road more than David because he left earlier. You really do. I mean, I, I, even people that are have done these problems for a long time. You have to, yeah, you do have to think about it. Otherwise you can make those kinds of careless mistakes. I think Gabby has a question. Uh, Gabby? Oh yeah. Uh, how do you know when to use a shunt? Oh, good question. So my, you can use, I'm one of those people that love charts. So if there's a whole lot of information in a problem and it's not gonna be easy to organize just in your head, then you can use a chart. But I always, almost always, use a chart when we're talking about distance, rate, and time. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Is I anyone going to stay uh, for office hours? Because I'll be glad to hang on if you are. I was going to say, I think these come up again, and we just kind of rearrange how they're done. So I think getting used to the table would really kind of help. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I for sure think the table's very helpful. Because there's, there's a few ways they can, like, ask these questions, too. Mm -hmm. And here, here we're setting the two distances equal to each other. But there's a few mm -hmm. other ways they can also do things. Yeah. Okay, well then we are through for the day and um, just submit this. I will post this and also submit your, um, the written work worksheet and you'll be in good shape and then watch the video for tomorrow.
And if anyone wants to hang on, I'll be, I will hang on and see if anyone wants to stay for office hours, I'll be glad to stay. But otherwise you're free to go. Thank you. All right, see y'all tomorrow if you're, if you're heading out. Later.